How do you eat dessert and burn fat at the same time? I tell you what, I would love to know this because I have a sweet tooth. I like eating Cornetto ice creams. I like eating King Cones from the Chevron gas station down the road from me <laughs> on the Boulevard. I like going down to the Bristol Farm supermarket and picking up a packet of chips on occasion. <laughs> hey. It's my Achilles heel sometimes, I got to tell you. Uh, desserts. I love eating desserts. And today we're going to talk to a, an expert in desserts. He's actually a health coach, a chef, and a model. And we're going to come up with three ways for you to eat dessert and burn fat at the same time. It's a big welcome to Crosby Taylor. How are you, Crosby? Good, good. Hey, James, how are you doing? Mate, it's great to, uh, great to have you here. We, you and I ran into one another. Well, we actually met at the, uh, the Bulletproof uh, Conference, Dave Asprey's Bulletproof Conference in Pasadena last year. And then we ran into one another at the Equinox Gym on uh, Sunset Boulevard in West Hollywood last week, didn't we? Yeah, everything, you know, happens for a reason. It's, it's, uh, it's really cool to meet somebody and, and then have it kind of uh, come back together in, in kind of full form. And both of us are doing very, very similar things in the health field. So it's just, you know, synchronistic. Now, I, like I said in my intro there, I love to eat dessert. Like, I love it. And uh, I've gone and done healthy desserts before. I've eaten, um, like, I've done coconut cream-based ice creams in my blender. Yeah, something like a yes. Of coconut milk, and I've added some cacao powder. Or I've added a little bit of fruit, and I've added, um, you know, some vanilla extract and things like that. But then I've put some ice in and blended it. But it wasn't quite the ice cream flavor. And then I actually bought an ice cream making machine but it was too laborious and it didn't really yeah. quite work out and i don't really want to sit at home and cook and and bake cookies and healthy cookies <laughs> I, I, i'm a guy on the run right like i don't right want to, right right, right. Before, before we get into your healthy desserts <laughs> is there a way that we can do this quickly and efficiently without having to go like oh this is a pain in the ass i've got to use a blender i gotta like bake i gotta turn the oven i gotta learn how to be a chef and all that kind of stuff yeah, I mean, there are a couple of sim simple different ways that you can create something that's going to satisfy the sweet tooth. Uh, one being just like, like you said before, some of these powders that you, a lot, of, a lot of these superfood powders that us health nerds have at home, you can throw a couple of them into kind of like almost like a coffee cup, like a circular round coffee cup. And if you take the right powders, like you're saying a cacao powder, the right sweetener, I really like. Uh, Lakanto. I use a lot of Lakanto in my stuff, which is a blend of monk fruit and erythritol. And you, you know, you flavor it right with like a pinch, you know, a little pinch of pink salt. And you got some stuff like MCT oil and ghee and these kind of things for the fats. And if you can stir up something in a cup that will taste kind of like this kind of like chocolate fudge, that's a really, really quick and easy way to satisfy a sweet tooth. And when, like I said, when you're somebody that has those kind of things at home, it's just boom, boom, boom. You just throw them all together and there you go. You're on the couch scooping up a little chocolate dessert, you know, reading well, your favorite book. Well, good. That's encouraging then because yeah. I always find myself, you know, late at night, I'm, I've got a bit of a, you know, I'm, all of a sudden I want a dessert and I got nothing in the house. I got a bunch of supplements. I'm like, I'm okay during the day because I've got kale, I've got spinach, I've got right. some supplements. I got, a, I, I got uh, you know, some pretty healthy things there, but not that not enough to satisfy my sweet tooth. And so sure. on occasion, you know, I'll, I'll leave, the, I'll leave the apartment and I'll walk down the road and I'll try, I'll, I'll, I'll grab something. So that's good. That's yeah. encouraging that there's an easy way to do this because I'm inherently a lazy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? I feel like, I feel like I want to cook all the time, like lunch and dinner. I want to cook and I get done with the gym and instead of coming home, I'm like, well, I can just go straight to air one and get a plate. That's going to be something I would make at home in the first place. And then I'm like, Oh, let's cook at night. And then I'm like, well, I could just go somewhere like this. I mean, LA has so many different health spots that I can be just as lazy, but when it comes to desserts, I, I really, nowadays, I really don't trust a lot of different places. I really don't trust a lot of people and I make my own desserts and yeah. And you, you just referenced Air One there. Air One is actually uh, probably, it's considered one of the healthiest uh, store, shopping stores in Los Angeles. It's right near the Grove mm. in Los Angeles. It's kind of off Beverly Boulevard. I was actually just there on Monday night. I went and saw a movie uh, at the Grove and then I walked to Air One, not with anything 
not any, with any buying you know, thought in mind. I just wanted to go and check it out and be amongst all the healthy stuff. And I ran into someone I knew there. It's like so funny. It's like more of a social scene than it is it's, a shopping scene. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. It is the social scene for, for healthy people. I feel like people walk in there. I mean, I can't, get, I can't get out of there without talking to at least four or five people. So, um, <laughs> so there you go. If you're also looking to date, you're also looking for a <laughs> partner, just go to a healthy food store in your local city. In your, your yeah, local Whole Foods, Air One, you know, yeah. even Trader Joe's. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get into this. Okay, so we're talking about how to eat dessert and burn fat. We're talking to Crosby Taylor, who is a health coach, chef, and a model. You can find him uh, on Snapchat and all the other social medias at, at Crosby Taylor, C R O S B Y Taylor, T A I L O R, and his website, which is Eat Dessert Burn Fat. So let's go over a few after dinner desserts. I think we're going to talk about cookies, ice cream, and chocolate. So let's do, yes, let's do cookies first, shall we, Taylor? Uh, Crosby, yeah. rather. Sorry, I'm calling you by your surname there. That's okay. It's a very, get, uh, very Australian thing to do. You know, it's an Australian thing. We call people by their last names. Like, hey, Swanick, over here. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Crosby, everybody doesn't think that's my first name because that's usually a last name. So I get that a lot. People call me Taylor. But, um, but yeah, cookies. So yeah. the cookies I came up with kind of on a whim. I was making a lot of different smoothies and um, healthy ice creams and stuff like that. But I started baking with the idea that maybe I can throw a lot of these similar powders that I was making in a smoothie into a mix and, you know, throw some eggs and some stuff to make, to bake with and put together some kind of baked good. And it took me a little bit. I mean, I had like three or four tries and I got to a place where I was like, okay, I'm really satisfied with this kind of baked good. And what happened was I eventually turned it into um, <clears throat> what now I'm working on as a baking mix. And the baking mix is pretty much done. And now I'm, I'm going to work on packaging it and branding it and everything so that everybody at home could make pretty much every baked good recipe that I have off of this one kind of like my base vanilla mix. And I'm using only um, Lakanto, like I said before, it's my, my main sweetener. It's a blend of uh, monk fruit and erythritol. Um, erythritol that has, has actually been shown to not cause any stomach issues, unlike its counterpart, xylitol, which is another sugar alcohol that I, that I noticed I was using for a while and I actually had to stop using it because my stomach, I was getting all these different stomach issues and I was like, maybe it's the xylitol. So I switched over to this and it's just been amazing. So I use, this is my main sweetener for everything. So it's, a, it's called erythritol and you spell that E-R-Y-T-H-R-I-T-O-L. Yeah, erythritol. And yeah. so erythritol is a, is a sweetener, correct? Mm -hmm. It's like sugar, but without the calories. Is, is, that, is that the best it's, way of explaining it? Yeah, it's zero glycemic, zero calories, zero sugar. Um, and the amazing part about erythritol is it doesn't go through a wild fermentation, which can create fermentation in the gut. They do a special fermentation um, process and basically have come down to They've scientifically proven that, that it does not cause any stomach discomfort and it does not digest in a way to where your insulin will spike. So it's the best of both worlds. Um, so the people out there that are freaked out about candida can use it as well as people that are diabetic and, and that have sugar intolerance. It's really, really amazing. And it still tastes so sweet. It tastes just tastes delicious. You can put it really in, with anything. It's still going to give you curb that sweet tooth that you're missing when, you know, it, it's sweeter than, than honey, than maple syrup, than all these other things, coconut nectar that people are using as sugar substitutes that still do spike blood sugar. And how so, do you buy erythritol? Does it come in a, in a package, a powder, or is it uh, like, what, what does it look like? Uh, erythritol, there's only a couple places in LA that are selling it off the shelves, but you can get it online. It's lakanto.com. How do you spell Lakanto? Uh, L-A-K-A-N-T-O. Okay. And the conto.com is what exactly is that? That's a place that that's a brand of erythritol. That's the brand. That's the brand of erythritol. They, uh, they sell like some chocolate bars on there as well. And they sell a, well, the, it's the blend. It's the monk fruit and erythritol. So the blend they sell as a regular white sugar type um, pro uh, product as well as a brown sugar. And can, can people get this anywhere? Like if someone's listening to this, they're not in a health conscious city like LA, maybe they're, I don't know, whatever they're yeah, yeah, yeah. in Alabama or they're it's, in on, it's on Amazon. You can get it straight from their website. 
Okay, so you can actually just type in erythritol on Amazon, or you can go to lakonto.com. Um, and and but did you? St- it's it's a true that only few supermarket chains across the U.S. actually carry it on their shelves. Right, right, right. It's not. It's it's been around for a little bit, but it's just it just wasn't one of those sweeteners that became as popular as like something like a xylitol or some of these other sugars that are okay. on the shelves. So erythrit- um, and it comes in a, um, in what kind of form is it? Did you say powder or, or they're coming out with a powdered version, but it's a granulated uh, version right now. But, but I have, I have the, you know, beginning powder because they, they, they're That's working okay. with me right now. So the, the powder is a lot better because when you stir it into, when you stir it into something, as opposed to blending it with something, mm-hmm. you don't get that like granulated, weird, like I only have sugar bites every once in a while. It's more of it's blended through and consistent without uh, within the the dessert. Okay, cool. So we're talking about making cookies here. So we've got yeah. To so we need got erythritol. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of the baking mix, I'm not going to give you all of my secrets because it's going to come into a pro- proprietary blend. But let's just say it's it's packed full of protein. It's got um, certain resistant starches like tiger nut flour. I use I use tiger nut flour in some of my some of my baked goods, coconut flour, which is an amazing substitute for something that normal people would be using, whether it's a white flour or a wheat flour, coconut flour, it's got some MCTs and um, it's full of, packed full of fiber. And then uh, there's certain proteins that are very, very, very digestible proteins. So this is also a protein packed, a fiber packed, it's a protein packed and it's a good fats packed cookie, very low carbohydrate, zero sugar. So in the end of the day, whether you're making, whether I'm making, you know, cutting up, creating my own chocolate, cutting up into chunks and the chocolate's full of like MCT oil to give you that thermogenic effect, that cognitive boosting effect and cutting that up into into chunks after it's frozen, throwing it into my batter and making chocolate chunk cookies or making, putting a little pumpkin puree and some pumpkin spice and some cinnamon and making some pumpkin spice bunt cakes to, throwing a little lemon poppy seed in there and making lemon poppy seed cookies or a lemon poppy seed bread. There's so many different variations that you can create from this one mix. And so that's why I want, I wanted it to be like this so that people can look at all the recipes that I've created and be empowered at home to go, I'm going to make this cookie tonight. I want to make this brownie this night. I'm going to make, and it's just ongoing kind of thing. And they could be feeding these things to their okay. kids on a nightly basis. So let, let's just say, we'll, we'll, we'll give them the link to your vanilla baking mix uh, towards the end of the show. But for now, let's just say they, they're not going to use your mix. They want to make a home-based cookie. Like, what are we putting in there? We've got erythritol, obviously. Mm-hmm. But like, mm-hmm. let's just list the foods and how we make a, a cookie, whether we, whether we use your product or we don't. Right. So you're going to, you know, you're going to need a flour base. There's all different types of flour bases you can use from coconut flour to if you wanted to have some kind of carbohydrate base in there, some quinoa flour. If you want to stay away from gluten um, and if if you're trying to stay away from grains, you can use everything from different nut flours like coconut flour to almond flour to a specific product that just came upon the market, tiger nut flour, which is a resistant starch. It's full of um, prebiotics that will feed your uh, good bacteria. So you're getting some health benefits out of it when you do something like that. I made a ginger snap, like kind of molasses ginger snap cookie the other day with tiger nut flour, and it was amazing. And so okay. you, you're so obviously using... going to need some, some eggs. eggs. Really like... Okay, yep. yeah. So, yeah, coconut, yeah. so we're using some kind of flour, whether it's coconut, mm-hmm. almond, or tiger nut. Mm-hmm. Eggs. Mm-hmm. How many eggs do we need? Uh, depending upon the, 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 the batch, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, anywhere from – two eggs, four eggs. I mean, it really just depends on okay. uh, and how, how big of a batch you're making. Um, I really like to use ghee okay. uh, as opposed to butter. Some people are you know, sensitive to lactose. And so ghee is a lactose casein and salt free product that has like a very, very rich flavor. Ancient Organic sells a really, really amazing tasting ghee that I use for pretty much all of my baking. Um, and, you know, in terms of getting it to rise some kind of uh, baking powder uh, like an aluminum free baking powder is a really, really great addition to getting that cookie consistency. When you say uh, aluminum free baking powder, does that suggest that some baking powder has aluminum in it? Yeah, there's a, I mean, Bob's, Bob's Red Mill sells an aluminum free 
um, baking powder. So I would assume that you're going to get out of the normal baking powders, you're going to get some kind of aluminum. Okay. Um, which is interesting. Okay. I never really realized that either until I found that Bob's Red Mill one. And I was like, oh, I guess this, is, this would be a better option. <laughs> okay. So that's coconut flour, eggs, ghee, and aluminum free baking powder. Anything else we need? Uh, yeah, you're, <clears throat> you're going to want to, you know, have some kind of flavor, you know, flavor profile in there. So obviously we have the, the, sh the sugar and, and you can add stevia if you'd like for certain different flavors. I mean, there's like English toffee stevia, there's butterscotch stevia, there's different things that you can throw in there. Um, as well as, you know, if you're a chocolate person, you want to make some brownies, it's, it would be really great to throw some cacao powder and some cacao butter in there and stir that up. And you can create a nice rich kind of brownie texture out of, or, or kind of like a chocolate, pure chocolate cookie out of something like that. So is that including stevia and erythritol? It, it, it just depends on the flavor profile and, and how big of a sweet tooth the person has. But if you uh, kind of have a nice touch with erythritol and, and with, the, with the Lakanto and the stevia together, you can create a really, really nice cookie. So you can put all of that in, erythritol and stevia. Sure. Can you put stevia in without the erythritol? Yeah. Yeah. You can put stevia in with the erythritol, but it's, it's just the balance of flavor. Um, a lot of people are sensitive to stevia. So when it comes to the metallic, some people have like a metallic aftertaste when they have stevia. So when you have the more of the really, really tastes like sugar type product, like Lakanto, it curbs, it, it takes that away. Salt is actually, pink salt is actually a really nice addition when you're using stevia as well. Anything, whenever I make any kind of dessert, I always will create something that I always throw the pink salt in there to curb any kind of like weird aftertaste of the stevia. Okay. So just on the ingredients then, we're looking at some kind of flour, whether it be mm -hmm. coconut, almond, or tiger nut. We're looking at eggs, mm -hmm. preferably pasture raised eggs. Um, mm -hmm. We're looking at ghee, G-H-E-E. -E. We're looking at some aluminum, aluminum free baking power, powder, mm -hmm. which you can get, but there's a brand called Bob's Red Mill. Uh, erythritol, and or stevia and or pink salt and then some cacao powder is that right cacao powder is, is, an, is an additive as well as you know going back to some of the flowers when it comes to people that want to be completely nut free as well you can grind up some flaxseed and have some ground flaxseed as your your main base the cinnamon rolls some of the, the cinnamon rolls that i make i do that with i just ground up some flax golden flaxseed and that's that's my base for for a cinnamon roll. Um, okay, so the 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 ground brown flax seed is an alternative to the flour. Yeah, or or an addition. You can you can mix and match these things. Um, you kind of really have to play with it at home to get the consistency and the texture that you want. Because obviously, if you're using all coconut flour, they're going to be really really dense and a little dry. But if you can combine um, some of these flowers together, you're going to get, you know, a product that is way more satisfying. Okay. So we've got the ingredients and now I'm starting to get a little bit concerned because you told me that I wouldn't be doing much baking and I'd be doing like the lazy man's cooking. So what am I going to do now? Now I've got to like set aside three hours and put it in the, put it in the oven, Crosby. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's sounding really taxing uh, at this <laughs> point. And so my main suggestion is when, Crosby's cookies baking mix is out. You just get a baking mix and now you got it all taken care of. All you got to do is add the wet ingredients and you're looking at something that's gluten, sugar, grain, and dairy free as a cookie at home, a cookie alternative at home on a, on a nightly basis. And so what would you do then? Let's just say you've got your mix that you put all together. What, mm -hmm. how, do you then, how do you then make that? Like what, how does it work? So, you know, adding the wet ingredients, um, then, Giving it, give it a nice stir. You can set it in the fridge for a second so that it sets. And then I'm just greasing a pan with ghee, popping the oven on to about anywhere from 350 to 375, and um, ice cream scooping the, 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 the mix right on in, in little cookie balls, and you throw it in there for, I mean, my mix is done in eight to nine minutes. Okay, so you have to understand here, right? I don't, I'm not, I don't cook this kind of stuff. So when you say put wet ingredients in, I'm not following you. So we've got right. your powder. What, right. what do we do? Like literally what are the physical steps 
that I've got your powder or I've got these ingredients. Uh -huh. What do I do? So you're going to need ghee. Okay. You're going to need, you're going to need a, a certain amount of ghee. You're going to need a certain amount of eggs and um, you're going to need a certain amount of liquid. I like to use like an unsweetened coconut milk. Mm -hmm. um, and then depending on the flavor profile, you can add like for my butterscotch cookies, uh, you know, a, a half drop or a butterscotch stevia will give it that kind of flavor. If you wanted to create more of like a cinnamon cookie, all you need is um, a, a tablespoon of cinnamon. If you wanted to do um, any other variation, you can start be, besides the recipes that I'm going to be throwing up on my website for people to be following along and creating these things, you know, people can get creative themselves and, and, you know, come up with their own recipes, whether they like matcha. So you throw it in, you know, a couple of teaspoons of matcha powder and you add a little bit of vanilla stevia and you can create, start to create all these different types of um, cookies and um, breads and, and muffins. And it all can come from this one baking mix, which is for, you know, the stay at home mom that's got a couple kids. I think it's a really, really healthy alternative to what else is out there on the market. <clears throat> so are we mixing all this stuff together in a bowl and putting it on a tray? What are we doing? Yeah. Yeah. So step by step, we're going to, we got to mix, we got to get a big bowl. You know, you got to mix that together in a consistent form to where it's nice and smooth. It's going to get kind of like sticky, like a cookie would get, and you can set it or you could place it right away. When it comes to muffins and breads and some of the tins that you'll be using for that, you can just put it right in. If you are um, going to be making a cookie consistency, it's better to set it in the fridge for like 10 to 15 minutes. And then, especially for chocolate chip, I like to set it in the fridge, get the, let the batter get a little harder, and then cookie scoop those on to a pan. You'll, you'll get out of the mix, you'll get um, 16 to 18 cookies. You can put them all on one pan and pop it in the oven for eight to nine minutes. Um, after, you pop, after you take the cookies out, you can set them back in the fridge and I'll have recipes for people to create amazing little icings to put on top as well. So whether you want to make a butterscotch cookie and put a little um, butterscotch icing on top or it's a pumpkin spice cookie with a cream cheese probiotic icing on top, um, I have all of these different recipes that will be uh, able, that the user will be able to have um, from my website to mix and match all different types of things. Okay. So there's cookies. And then how do we make sure we don't overeat? Because once the healthy cookies are there, <clears throat> I might eat 10 of them thinking that they're healthy, but then in actual fact, because I've eaten 10, I'm unhealthy. So how do you, how do you limit yourself to having? Exactly. Well, you know, yeah, everything in balance, everything in moderation, it is because they are so delicious. I can understand somebody's like first time of wanting to eat all of them, but you'll notice after eating about three of them that because of the amount of fiber and the, and the good fats and the protein, it's not like a high carbohydrate based cookie where you can eat tons of them and your metabolism is just rapidly speeding through them while you're eating them. You're going to get full. You're going to get satisfied. You're going to have three of them and be like, wow, I'm really full. And then at that point, um, it's, you know, it's kind of up to you whether you're going to stuff yourself and, and be laying on the couch for the rest of the night. But there are times when I've done it and let's just say the next morning, it's just, it's, there's enough fiber that you're going to be completely detoxed. And, uh, I, I've had times when I've gone through a dozen cookies and nothing's happened because I just, eliminated the next day so well <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so there's cookies let's mm -hmm. move on to ice cream how do we get some, get some healthy ice cream happening well you were saying you were kind of like talking about ice cream maker and all the issues with that and how you can like throw things together in a smoothie and you're like well it's not really the consistency so the way that i make ice cream involves um the vitamix which is an amazing way to create ice creams and you do it with literally ice powders oils and when you have a vitamix and it has that that like plunger you can kind of pound it all together in a consistent form while 
it's blending to create this texture that I show all the time my Snapchat. I do a lot of like Snapchat ice creams where I show like the process. So you'll see the texture and people are always writing me and being like, how did you get it to be exactly like an ice cream? Well, when you put these things together and some of these gradients I'll let you know about, it, it just, it just forms this exact texture that you would get if you went to the store and popped open a regular dryer's ice cream. So you want to start with um, a base of like a cup of ice, throw that in the Vitamix. And then you're going to be adding like a lot of your superfood powders, different things that, that are going to create your flavor. So everything from tocotrinols, which is a rice bran soluble powder. How do you spell, how do you spell that? I've not heard of that before. What is that? Tocotrinols. It's a T O C O T R I E N N O L S tocotrinols. Okay. And what are the, what are those things? Tocotrinols are rice bran solubles that are um, loaded in vitamin E and it comes in a powdered form. You can buy it, you know, online. There's a bunch of different brands from Sun Potion to a couple other ones. I, I like to use the Sun Potion brand, uh, but that's like a kind of a base bottom for a lot of the mixes because it kind of gives it some substance okay. and, and it also is great for the skin. It's loaded with vitamin E and then depending on, what kind of, you know, whether you're vegetarian or vegan or, or you're working you know, paleo or whatever it is, uh, some kind of protein powder in there to give it a protein based ice cream. So from a whey protein isolate that people can stomach well to like a grass fed colostrum powder to both to a collagen powder to uh, what I've been working on lately is because of just the rehabilitation of the gut and not throwing anything in there that um, creates any kind of issues. I really love this new bone broth protein that Dr. Axe has. And there is, you know, there's a vanilla, there's a chocolate and it's, it's really, really crazy. Like it's a, it's a powdered version of bone broth, but it's loaded with protein, hyaluronic acid, uh, glucosamine, chondroitin, everything that's great for your skin, bones, joints, tendons as well as the gut lining, like rehabilitating the gut, which a lot of people have issues in the gut. And so now you're creating, now you're making at home a, an ice cream that's delicious, but you're adding, you know, this bone broth protein, you're adding something like a collagen protein, which is just going to give you more aid for your <clears throat> ligaments and tendons, healthy skin, nourishing that, providing more collagen for the skin. And then the Lakanto, always the Lakanto in there. You can add some stevia as well to create different flavors. Um, lacuma, mesquite, some of these are superfoods that you can throw a tablespoon of, of some of these things in there depending on what you're creating. Again, with the cacao powder. So you're, you're kind of putting together in powder form different types of variations and flavors and to be like, to kind of just give you one that I would do would be something like, um, you know, a scoop of the bone broth protein, a couple tablespoons of collagen powder, um, <clears throat> three tablespoons of tocotrinols, a tablespoon of lacuma, a teaspoon of maca, a gelatinized maca, um, to, for hormone balance, as well as the flavor. You can throw in uh, a tablespoon of Lakanto. You can throw in, kind of like a half dropper of vanilla or English toffee stevia and a couple tablespoons of cacao nibs. Yeah. Okay. And, then, and then you got your fat. So you're going to throw in anything from MCT oil or a brain octane oil, bulletproof brain octane oil. So now you're <clears throat> revving up the engine of the ice cream and giving it some thermogenic capabilities as well as a grass fed ghee to give it some CLAs, or you could throw in an egg yolk and get your fats from an egg yolk or a duck egg yolk, which I've been like to using lately. And, or just throwing, <clears throat> if you're a vegetarian, just throwing in a big scoop of almond butter. So now you have, you know, you can do a plant protein instead of a bone broth protein and throw in some almond butter and you, you're creating more of a plant-based ice cream. A little bit of ice on top and you pound it up and it creates this consistency that's just an amazing ice cream experience. Yeah, it's um, when you were talking about the, 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 the protein powder, I have grass fed whey, um, mm -hmm. what the brand is, and it's chocolate, it's chocolate favored. So, what I could do then is put a scoop, you know, one cup of ice in my, my blender, mm -hmm. put, in, put in that protein 
powder and then you know maybe add a little bit of erythritol or, or something just as natural to sweet sweeten it and even that would be something better even that on itself while it might be a little bland because obviously you mentioned a lot of ingredients there it would still be enough presumably to satisfy my sweet tooth and it would be a, it would be healthy so it would crave it would help suppress my sugar cravings yeah late at night it would create the texture of ice cream. So I would be thinking, oh, okay, I've got this, this nice yeah. tasting thing and it's super healthy. Yeah. Yeah. There's different variations. There's different steps and, and obviously different budgets for these types of ice creams. And so like you're saying, you could do something as simple as that to something as extravagant as some of the things that I'll throw together. I mean, you can even at the end of that, mix up that chocolate sauce that you had and drizzle it all on top. And if there's some cacao butter in that chocolate sauce, <clears throat> it's going to harden. And now you have like a hard shell chocolate on top. Yeah. So I, when I have tried to make ice cream in my Vitamix before, when I, it, it, it ends up being um, too icy. Like there's some parts of the ice which don't crush down. So I put, I've gone through phases where I put too much ice in and it's just mm -hmm. too clunky. And then I put gone through a phase where I haven't put enough ice in and it's too liquidy. Mm. And I haven't quite found that right texture in between. What, what's your secret tip to getting that, that texture? Definitely less ice, more substance when it comes to the powder and the fat. Okay. So, okay. So, and the fat's very important too. So if, if you're only using like powders and ice, then, you know, it would serve you to throw in like the MCT or the ghee or even coconut oil or, uh, almond butter cashew butter some of these things that vegetarians would want to use yeah um, okay even if you wanted to create like a cool uh if you wanted to superfood it up you can throw together some of these different greens powders i really love premier research slabs greens powder you throw a little that with some cacao nibs and, and a little bit of a mint extract then you can create the color of like a mint chocolate chip ice cream as well as the flavor yeah I grow mint actually. I have a little in my little front balcony. I have uh, been growing some sweet peppers and some mint. Mm. So I could just go out there and grab a few mint leaves and throw that in. That would be cool. That'd be really awesome. Yeah. Um, now you mentioned Vitamix. I actually bought a Vitamix about 18 months ago. It was the greatest investment that I've made in my dietary habits, I guess. Right. <laughs> But I tell you, I ummed and art about it for six months because it was like $400. I mean, it can be, <laughs> it can be as much as $500 to get this. Right, right, right. And I think it was only the reason that I got it for $400 was because I had a $100 off voucher, I think. Okay. If I recall correctly. Um, and uh, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, depending on, you know, what your budget is. But like, I think $400, $400 to $500 for a machine that just blends foods together is is a lot right so for someone, for someone who's listening or watching who's on a budget mm -hmm. and doesn't want doesn't want or is unable to invest you know a few hundred dollars four hundred dollars five hundred dollars on a blender what's the alternative well you know obviously the other ways to make ice cream when somebody's looking at i want to make ice i want to start making ice cream they're going to also also look for online like an ice cream maker which is just as expensive and i think just as, it's harder to create it's something harder. Like I, it's harder I, I bought one and you gotta like you gotta freeze the container oh. and then you gotta like put it in with the consumption it's, and then you gotta like turn it on and then you've got to check check on it and i mean it's a process it's a, it's a whole deal it's just something that i do not want to spend time on no. and and then you know when it comes to just having a different regular blenders at home from even something like the bullet. It, it's, it's re, it would really be all about for these kind of people. I really don't think they're going to get the exact consistency that they're looking for. That would be like the Vitamix would do, but you can get something close. You just have to use more ice, less liquid and uh, kind of put it in, put it, put it together and just kind of like, throwing a little bit more liquid using fatty liquids too. So Coke, like a full fat unsweetened coconut milk would be your best option for creating something yeah. that's going to be kind of like a, a dense smoothie more than an ice cream. The ice cream thing is, you know, it's just, it's an investment. I think making ice cream is, is going to be an investment because you really don't have a lot of alternatives unless you want to go to a health store and get something that's still going to be loaded with if you're really watching your sugar a lot all the ice creams on the market are still bad in my opinion bad food combination 
Oh, yeah, no, it is. I mean, look, I've, I've looked at all healthy stuff. So there's this, this uh, soy free ice cream, which mm-hmm. is pretty, which, which is, I wouldn't say it's healthy, but I'd say it's not as bad for you. It's not right. good for you, but it's not as bad for you. And so I get that, 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 uh, that brand on occasion. Um, so I'm always, always looking for dairy free ice yeah. cream. And I'm always convincing myself that that's a hundred times better than if I'm getting Ben and Jerry's or, you know, Hagen dust and all sure. that stuff, which it, which it is obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think if you're really going to take, take your health seriously and you want to eat ice cream and you want to do it at home, like you, you do have to invest in something. I mean, look, you can buy a $20 blender, but it's not really going to give you, it's not really going to, work for you and <clears throat> excuse me and crushing <clears throat> that ice and getting that ice cream texture yeah yeah so if you're really wanting if you're listening to this now or watching this and you really want to um uh you know make homemade ice cream maybe look for a second hand vitamix um totally there's a lot try- of refurbished ones that are amazing i think actually i think that's the one that i got i got one uh with them like that and now um i'm actually affiliated because of the stuff that i do with vitamix i'm actually affiliated with, with them now and they have they send me uh, coupon things all the time through my email for you know, be, yeah this has to be a way to get it they're, they're cheaper yeah they they've come down I've had I've I've had I've gotten emails where they're down to like three forty nine so yeah it's still a little bit exy it's still a little bit expensive isn't it but uh, look, I mean but they're really amazing customer service and if you like they they they're, they're, the warranty on the product is pretty much forever I mean if you break, no, it is it is a lifetime warranty it's, it's lifetime crazy. it's lifetime yeah. right. But so, again, if you, but again, I mean, look, I, I, if you still really don't want to spend that amount of money on a Vitamix, like even if you don't want to spend a hundred bucks on it, I would search and try and find a secondhand one. Like just yeah. go onto eBay or uh, Craigslist or somewhere mm-hmm. and just try and get like, in my opinion, Vitamix is the, it's in a wonderful product. Like it's, it's amazing. But I know, trust me, I, I know what I was going through 18 months ago when I was stressing over, am I really going to spend Four hundred freaking dollars on a on a, on a blender on a, yeah. on a blender, and it's I'm glad I did because I use it all the time. Best but, best in investment for food ever. But at the time, it's yeah. Like, uh, mm, uh, mm, yeah. Uh, well, should I? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Mine is like I took four, that Bed Bath and Beyond coupon there like four times before I finally bought it. I was like, ugh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that, that's actually that's what you're you're reminding me now. That's where I got it. In fact, my twenty percent off, right? My so friends you gotta, Darren and Mary, who live in my apartment complex, actually gave me the, the coupon. Yeah, for for the for the hunt for the twenty percent off, which I guess was a hundred bucks. Hundred yeah. bucks. There you go. It's, it's Thank you, Darren and Mary. You're always saying <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, so there's ice cream. I'll just go over the things again. You said, um, uh, is it Toco Train Tosa Tri- How am I pronouncing it? Toco- Tocotrinols. Tocotrinols powder, mm-hmm. a protein based like powder, like you might use if you were bodybuilding in the gym, or you can get ones that are like low calories, obviously. I like to, to get grass fed ones. Yeah. Um, make sure they're grass fed. Crosby's suggesting a bone broth uh, based powder, which you can get. And then you can add stuff like cacao powder, erythritol, a um, tablespoon of um, maca, half drop of stevia, cacao nibs. For oils, you might want to put some MCT oil or brain octane oil in there. Maybe some grass-fed ghee, egg, eggs, maybe almond butter, coconut oil. You can put green powders, cacao nibs, mint extract. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can throw okay. in there as long as you've got some, a, a, a good amount of ice and a good blender like a Vitamix. Um, you don't have to put all of those things in. You can just experiment. You know, like I said, I've got a bit of mint outside. I could put some. Yeah. In. You can, I mean, what, what do you think about putting in frozen fruit? Because I always think, you know, frozen fruits, fruits, fruit, it's good yeah. for you. But then I worry like, oh, if I'm having this every night, I'm putting a lot of sugar in my system just an hour before I go to sleep. Is right. that storing fat around my waist? You know? uh, I mean, yeah, fructose will do that. And, you know, a, a, a good amount of fructose on a daily basis all the time is going to eventually, you know, create um, problems in your body where you're not as insulin sensitive and you're not going to use that energy like you used to. And so you're going to store and it, it would benefit you to not use it all the time. And instead, maybe even if you wanted to get that fruit flavor, uh, there's all different types of different antioxidant powders too. Like if you wanted to do like an acai, if you wanted to do a mangosteen, if you wanted to do um, 
like a tart cherry. All these things are super beneficial. Uh, antioxidants, tons of anthocyanins or um, all of those capabilities. But obviously, yeah, like if you're going to create a, um, a fruit smoothie at home, look at all the low glycemic fruits. Blueberry would be a really, really awesome option if you wanted to make a blueberry ice cream. I've done that before. Nope, no issues. All the like low glycemic berries from goji berries is an amazing option as well uh, anti-inflammatory it's great for the skin and the eyes and um it's it's also loaded with antioxidants okay so yeah you can do the the, the ones the things that like i'm not really big on is like throwing like frozen bananas into it yeah That's or mangoes of sugar pine. mangoes just oranges so much, a lot of sugar yeah a lot of um, sugar yeah but obviously if that person has, you can every once in a while, it's not going to kill you, especially right. when, especially when you metabolize, you know, if you're a type of person or if you have the body type to metabolize carbohydrates, well, you can get away with it. But if you're trying to lose weight and you're you know, shorter, more compact and you put on, um, you know, fat, well, you're, you're not going to want to use a lot of high glycemic type fruits in your diet. All right, so we've we've handled uh, cookies, we've uh, handled ice cream. Let's move on to the third one, which is uh, chocolate. So how do we make, uh, how do we make some chocolate? Chocolate. Uh, the chocolate. I have. A, I'll have a couple of recipes that are going to go up on the the website soon. I've, I've I've actually done some before, so I don't mind talking about the chocolate kind of to an exact form. Chocolates are really really fun, really really easy. Um, you know, you're going to need some type of to begin with some type of like, I, I, I like to use a nice rounded coffee cup because you really don't, you really don't need to use a lot of like powder and oil in this. You don't need like one of those big, when you use one of these big bowls for chocolate, it's hard to like stir it all in a very consistent form. Um, people that are doing that in big batches, you know, when you're making chocolate and you're selling chocolate, they do it like that. But just for yourself at home, something like an easy coffee cup, um, Four tablespoons of cacao powder, two tablespoons of your Lakanto powder, a pinch, a little pinch, a pinch of a nice pinch of pink salt, um, and then you know heat up some cacao butter. Throw some cacao butter on a pan on low. Heat that cacao butter up, um, and you can throw a tablespoon of an MCT or Brain Octane into the chocolate with a it's about a tablespoon and a half and then another tablespoon of cacao butter into the chocolate stir it all up you're going to get like a nice consistent liquid chocolate uh and throw that thing in the in the freezer and that's the base easiest way to make a chocolate when you take it out 25 minutes later you can just get a, a knife and kind of like poke around the edges and it'll pop right out like a little circle and you can cut up, cut up that into chunks, throw it in a cup and just eat little chocolate chunks. If you wanted to get creative, you can take that, you can take that mix and um, there's these really cool like Sir La Tab and a couple of these other um, KitchenAid places sell these like uh, silicone ice molds. And I like to use these silicone ice molds and I'll take the chocolate and I'll drizzle, you know, about quarter, quarter of a, of an inch to a half inch of chocolate in each bottom. And then I'll stir up on the side, maybe <clears throat> if you're into Reese's, you can stir up another cup with some almond butter, the Lakanto, um, and I mean, a little, even if you want to just be super simple, almond butter, Lakanto, a little pinch of, of pink salt, maybe a little bit of MCT, stir that up and you pour that in as you're, you know, you, you've already hard it, you throw the chocolate in, let it harden a little bit throw the almond butter on top of that and then throw another layer of chocolate. And you're going to make these cool kind of like trifecta squares of little Reese's chocolates, which people, I think a lot of people would nice. love. Yeah. All right. So that's you. Uh, that's a lot of that is using similar kind of ingredients um, is what we're using that you could be using for the ice cream. So you can actually get the same ingredients, <clears throat> create different, you know, create ice cream or, or chocolate, you know, you're talking about cacao powder, cacao butter, MCT mm -hmm. or brain octane oil. Mm -hmm. um, that all sounds pretty good. I mean, I always, if you're going to eat chocolate, I always say eat 
dark chocolate. Like if, mm-hmm. you, if you're not going to make your, your own stuff at home, you can buy brands in, in decent enough supermarkets. Um, and I would say 85% cacao plus. So the higher yeah. percentage of cacao in it, the healthier it is for right. you. Um, the danger, not the day. Well, maybe it is a little bit of a danger. The danger is when I buy that stuff, I, whenever it's kind of like that, that Pringles TV commercial, once you pop, you just can't stop. Yeah. It's like once I open that damn thing and I say, I'm only going to have one square or two squares. Of that, right. I end up eating the whole damn thing. And I look in the back and it's like the calories in that thing. There's a lot of calories in it, even though there's, it's still very healthy for you. So how do we, like, is there some, I guess it goes back to my question before, like how do we make sure that we're all excited about eating healthy and wow, now we're eating healthy desserts, but there's that danger that you can overeat thinking that you're, that you're healthy. So how do you rein in the, 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 the chocolate eating Crosby? Well, I mean, I can rein it in pretty well just because I'm not the biggest chocolate. I make a lot of chocolate because people want it, but I'm not a huge chocolate fan to start. So for me, I can eat a square and be satisfied, but you know, when it comes to somebody that's like, I know I have a lot of clients that are just like chocolate fanatics and they have, they go through periods where they can't help themselves and they'll eat like <laughs> four or five, four or five pieces. And now they're, you know, it's, it's rich when you're dealing with these good fats, it's, it's very, very rich. So the best, honestly, the best way is to make sure that you're kind of following a nice balanced diet where you're getting a good amount of protein, fiber, um, greens, uh, good fats on a regular basis. And you're kind of laying low on a lot of the sugary and starchy foods. You're going to create more of a, you know, balanced approach to food after that. And you're going to have, you know, you're not going to be like a crazy, like, sugar fanatic that's like, oh my God, I want to eat everything because that's kind of how it is when you, when you get close to food and your, you know, your blood sugar is going like this all day long, it's really easy to overeat, right? But if you're in like a, a balanced state and you're taking care of yourself and you're clean eating and you're more so, you know, I like to preach eating more like, you know, three meals a day tops, two meals a day with like liquids in the morning spreading out your meals and having more of like a little bit of like a bulk meal to satisfy. Um, that way, you know, you're not in like a very snacking approach to where when you get to something like dessert, you can go crazy. A lot of people will go or not eating all day long and your blood sugar is crazy. And then you get to that last part of the day when all you want is sweets and you just go crazy again. So it's, a, it's, it's really all about the person controlling your gut flora and your, you know, your biome and your, 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 your microflora to where you're not, your, your body, you're in charge of your body and your, your, you know, um, candida and certain pathogens aren't in charge of you. So at the end of the day, you're not going crazy on something and you can, your brain can switch off. I mean, that's, it's a, it's a big leptin thing. You know, if you're, you're yeah. the hormone leptin when, when you <clears throat> can't stop yourself from eating, that's a leptin issue. And so you're going to have to kind of have to look at that as well. All right. So there you go. There's some, uh, how to eat dessert and burn fat at the same time from Crosby Taylor, health coach, chef and model. You can find him uh, on all social medias at, at Crosby Taylor. And check out his website, which is Eat Dessert Burn Fat. Remember, there's two S's in dessert. Don't be <laughs> don't be writing out Eat Desert Burn Fat. <laughs> don't do that. It's Eat Dessert Burn Fat. Um, we talked about a lot of ingredients there, things like coconut flour, eggs, ghee, aluminum-free baking powder, erythritol, stevia, pink salt, cacao powder. Um, we've got uh, grass-fed uh, whey protein, bone broth-based powder. Bakuma, maca, cacao nibs, MCT oil, brain octane oil. A lot we've of got, <laughs> We've got mints. We've got acai powder, tart cherry, blueberries, goji berries. Uh, a lot of ingredients there. Um, yeah. We'll put out some show notes here. So go to my website, jameswanick.com, and you can get a list of all the ingredients that we talked about uh, today. Um, my advice is, you know, buy as many of those, <clears throat> of those ingredients as you can in one go, put them in your cupboard, 
get yourself a blender. Um, a Vitamix is best, even though it, it is quite costly. Um, make sure you've got ice on hand. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to make uh, ice cream and then right? realize that I don't have enough ice in the damn <laughs> So you've always, you've always got, and then you go, and then you go, oh shit, I got to walk down to like the, the Chevron gas station to get the ice. And then it's like, well, I'm going to carry this big bag of ice on my shoulder home, or I'm just going to buy the King Cone ice cream and be done with it. It, That's the funniest thing ever. Yeah. (laughs) I I got a 7-Eleven that's like two blocks from my house. And I'm like, damn it. I got to walk. It's like 10 at night. And I'm like, oh, I got to walk the 7-Eleven. I really, like, I really want it that bad at that point. So you're like, let's just do it. Go on the walk. Take so the make walk. sure you got make sure you got ice. Uh, and if you want some, you know, obviously if you don't, if you're like me and you're lazy and you don't want to be baking cookies, uh, Crosby's formula, his base vanilla baking mix will be coming out soon. Uh, make sure you check that out at eatdessertburnfat.com uh, and follow him on social media at c r o s b y t a i l o r. Go ahead and send him a tweet right now or follow him on Snapchat. And we'll do a little, actually, speaking of Snapchat, we'll do a little Snapchat while we're recording the podcast episode right. here. And uh, I'll get you to give me, um, say, one healthy tip on how to make, uh, or, or maybe the ingredients for healthy ice cream. Shall we do that, Crosby? You do, let's see if we can do that in 10 seconds. Yeah, is that a 10 second snap, yeah, right? 10 seconds. Here we go. And I'll, I'll, I'll say, I'll say, um, uh three healthy ingredients for ice cream crosby homemade ice cream and then you rattle them off here we go three two one three healthy homemade ingredients for homemade ice cream crosby go yeah you're gonna need protein powder you're gonna need some kind of fat and you're gonna need some kind of sweetener with a little ice you pound it up there you go bang look you go look at that let's see if you made it let's uh, i did let's have a look yeah you're gonna need protein powder you're gonna need some kind of fat and you're gonna need some kind of sweetener with a little ice you pound it up there you there you go. You got there. Snapchat. So if you're listening on the podcast, <laughs> follow me at Snapchat, which is at James Swanick. If you're not on Snapchat yet, get on it. It's huge. It's blowing up. It's a great way to see behind the scenes uh, of my life, of other, other people's lives as well. Do little 10 second videos. I do. Oh, and James. Yes. I, I almost forgot. Um, don't forget. I will be, tell your listeners, I will be um, on a Snapchat show. Uh, launching in the middle of August. August 12th is a tentative launch date and it's going to be called Brother. It'll be on the Discover tab on the top and I am on there making all my desserts. So um, have people tune into that as well. Nice one. Yeah. All right. There you go. So Crosby Taylor with uh, easy ways or healthy ways uh, to eat dessert and burn fat. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. Thanks, James. Thanks for having me. And to the listener and to the viewer, thanks for watching and listening. Catch you on the next one. See ya.